Hello, welcome to Prigium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 48 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about the custom validator control. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 45, 46 and 47 of this video series. The custom validator control allows us to write a method with a custom logic to handle the validation of the value entered. If none of the other validation controls serve our purpose, then a custom validator control can be used. Just like any other validation control, custom validator control can be used to perform both the client and server-side validations. Obviously, the client and server-side validation functions needs to be written by the developer and we also need to associate them to the custom validator control. Let's see how to achieve this with an example. We'll ask the user to enter a number into a text box and then if the number is not an even number, we want to show a validation message saying not an even number. And obviously to achieve this, we don't have you know any of the built-in validation controls available. So we have to use the custom validator control and write our own logic. Let's see how to do that. Let's flip to Visual Studio. I have the web form already designed here. We have this text, please enter a positive even number, and a text box control for the user to enter the number, a button, and a label control. Let's flip to the source mode. Let's drag and drop the custom validator control next to the text box. So custom validator, and let's give it a meaningful name since it's validating even numbers. I'm gonna call this custom validator even. And let's give it a meaningful error message. Let's call this not an even number. And the next important property that we need to specify is the control to validate. So which control we want to validate, we want to validate the text box txt even number. And the next property is on server validate. So this property specifies the server side method that this validation control needs to invoke in order to, you know, uh, perform the validation. So we, are, we have to first write that method and then hook that method to this property. So let's see how to do that. You know, the easiest way to get the signature of the server side validation method is to flip flip to the design mode, go to the properties of this validation control and click on the events tab. And then there is an event called server validate. So double click that and then the event handler is automatically generated. And if you go to the design mode, you can see that on server validate, the, the method name is hooked up to that event of this control custom validator. Okay. And another thing that we want to do, we want the color in red. So I'm going to set for color is equal to red. Okay, so now let's write this function. So our goal is that the entered number should be an even number. So if you look at you know the parameter that is coming into this event handler method, it's called server validate event arguments object. Now this arguments object has got two properties. The first property is if args dot value. Look at this property. This value property is going to receive the value that the user types into the text box control. So if I enter a number into this text box control, that value will be sent using this value property of the args object. So what we basically want to do, if args.value, if that number, obviously that needs to be converted to a number. So let's convert that to integer. So convert dot two in 32. Okay, after conversion, if that is divisible by two, you know, if we if it's divisible by two, then we know that it's a valid even number. So how will we tell the validation control it has passed the validation? All you have to do is this arguments object has got another property called is valid, which is a Boolean property. If you set that to true, then you are saying to the validation control, okay, the value is fine. Um, you know, it has passed validation. So I'm going to set that property to true. On the other hand, if it's not divisible by two, then we know that it is not a valid even number. So in which case, we will set that property to false. So args dot is valid is equal to false. So that's it. We have written our custom method. Okay. So now this method is also associated with 
the validation control. So let's run this and see if the server-side validation works. Now until this point we have only performed the server-side validation. So I'm going to enter maybe in 99 which is not an even number. I click save. Look at that not an even number. Validation error data not saved. And this code is already written. It's a pretty simple code. We have the button so when we click the button we have this event in the button click, I mean code in the button click event, if page dot is valid, this is valid property will be true if all the validation controls have succeeded validation and then we are saying data saved and the full color of the label is set to green. Else, you know, it comes to else part if any validation controls has failed validation. In our case, it has failed validation. So it has come to the else part and in the else part we are saying validation error data not saved and we have set the color to red. Okay, so we have seen at how to achieve the server-side validation, but then there is a slight problem here. Look at this. If I don't enter any text there, and then I click save, the validation succeeds. Okay, um, which is good. You know, so this control is not validating when the text is empty. Okay, now interestingly, this custom validator has got a property. If you look at the properties, there is a property validate empty text. So what does this property mean? Whether if the validation control validates the control when the text of the control is empty. So if the if the text that is empty, should the validation control validate it or not? If I set this property to true, by default it's false, which means it will not validate if um, you know if the text box is empty, in which case it will not call the server side method. Okay, but let's say I want to turn that on, you know, even if it's empty, I want to validate. Okay, so in which case you will set that property to true. So if you set that property to true, what's going to happen when I click the save button? It's going to call the server side validation method, and obviously it tries to convert args.value. Args.value will be empty if I don't enter anything there, and obviously it's going to fail when it trying to when it tries to convert that to an integer. So we have to handle that as well. Let's quickly run this and see if we actually get that error when we don't enter anything into the text box and then click the save button. Look at that input string was not in a correct format, and that's because it's trying to convert an empty string into an integer, and we get that uh, you know input. Uh, I mean format exception basically. So let's see how to correct that. Obviously to correct that we can simply check okay if arcs.value if that value is empty string we know that there's nothing present in which case else we want to do this. Okay if arcs.value is empty then you know we want to say arcs. is valid is equal to false okay so if it's empty then we are setting that to false which means the validation will fail on the other hand you know this page will also fail look at this if I don't enter anything into the text box now and then I click to try to click the save button validation fails which is good but then if I enter a number like this 10 instead of 10 and then click save look at that it's going to fail again because it cannot convert the word 10 into an integer and that's where it fails so obviously we need to cater for that as well so how do we do that when we are trying to convert to an integer you know we have to check are we able to successfully convert that or not and how do we do that to do that let me first create a variable int number and then I am creating another variable bool is number and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the try parse method so int dot try parse and this is an interesting method if you look at this method it's taking in a string object and then it, it will try to convert that to an integer if it is successful in converting that to an integer it will return true otherwise it will return false and if it is successful in converting that to an integer, it will store that value in an output parameter. So I'm going to pass first the string that we want to convert. The string that we want to convert is this args.value. So I'm going to pass that to this method. And then we need a variable which will receive that value. So I have this variable which needs to be passed in as an output parameter. OK, that's it. So what we are going to do here we need to check okay instead of doing all this first we need to check is it a number if it's number 
and this variable will tell if it's a number or not. So if it's a number and if that number divided by 2 gives us 0 then we know that it's a positive I mean it's it's an even number but before that we also want to ensure that the number should be greater than or equal to 0 okay so it should be a number and the number must be greater than or equal to 0 and the number divided by 2 should return 0 in which case it's an even number if any of these conditions fail then it's an not a positive even number okay so let's run this and see if our validation method works as expected so I enter number 10 I click save button the validation should fail not an even number and if I enter a positive number a positive even number data saved if I enter 0 data saved if I enter minus 99 and click save validation error data not saved okay so everything is working 96 is an even number I click save and works so so far we have seen how to validate on the server side now let us see how to do the validation on the client side so obviously we have the server side function to do the server side validation and we have hooked that to the validation control using on on server validate now if we have to perform the client side validation we have to do that either using javascript or vb script javascript is supported by all the browsers so it's better to write that in javascript so let's see how to first write this client side javascript function so to write the client side javascript function i'm going to go into the head and then specify script and the type is going to be text slash javascript and the language is going to be JavaScript so this is where we'll write our function so function let's call this is even because this checks whether if the number is even or not okay and for consistency what we are going to do is if you look at the server side validate method it has got two properties source and arguments I'm going to use the same parameters into this method as well so I'm going to call this args um, I mean the first parameter is source and the next parameter is args so I'm going to have these two parameters to this function okay so what we are going to do now if args dot value okay if that is empty if that is empty then we know that it's not a valid even number so args dot we are going to set the is valid property to false okay on the other hand if it's not empty then we need to check okay if args dot value if that divided by 2 is equal to 0 then we know that it's going to be an even number in which case we will set args dot valid is equal to true else we will set args.valid is equal to false okay so that's it we have the method you know the JavaScript method all we need to do now is to specify this as the client side function for the validation control so how do we do that there is another property called client side validation function so client validation function and all you have to do here is specify the name of the client side validation function here the name of the function is is even so I'm going to specify that in this property that's it we are done so now let's go ahead and run this now the client side validation also should happen so now look at this I enter maybe 45 I click away I, I am not clicking the button I'm just clicking away look at that not an even number if I don't enter anything and then click away still I have that because we said you know the property validate empty text is equal to true and then if I enter a positive number 46 positive even number look at that the validation uh, error goes away and when I click save it gets saved as expected 
Okay, so these are the properties specific to the custom validator. On server side validator, this specifies the name of the server side validation method that needs to be invoked. Client validation function that specifies the client side validation function. And validate empty text specifies whether the validator validates the control when the text of the control is empty. By default, this property is false, and both the client side and server side validation functions will not be invoked if the associated input control is obviously empty. But if you turn it to true, then if the even if the text is empty, you know, the functions will be called and if there's a client side validation function on the client side, you know, as soon as you empty out the text box, click away, the validation error will be triggered. On this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.